Hey, credit heroes. I never learned about credit in school and it almost ruined my life. When a bank error caused my credit to drop and my payments to skyrocket, I had to learn about credit fast. And that's why I'm helping you to crack the credit code. Today, I'm gonna to break down the factors that go into your credit score. I'm gonna break them down into bite-sized pieces. So stick around because by the end of this episode, you're gonna understand everything you need to know about your credit score. So you better stick around. My name is Daniel Rosen and welcome to Credit Repair Business Secrets. In the 20 years since releasing my first credit repair software, I have helped thousands of businesses scale from the ground up. And I've experienced many of the same challenges that credit heroes face, and I've learned proven ways to overcome them and succeed. And a lot of people don't. Credit isn't taught in school, and the system is confusing on purpose. Imagine if your entire financial life was boiled down to one single number. Well, that's essentially what a credit score is. It's like a financial report card, but instead of A's and F's, you're looking at a number between 300 and 850. The higher your score, the more lenders will want to work with you. But here's where it gets really interesting. It's not just about whether or not you can get a loan or not. Want to rent that swanky downtown apartment? Your landlord might be peeking at your credit score. Eyeing that dream job? Some employers are looking at credit scores too. Your credit score can impact your insurance and it can be the difference between affordable coverage and rates that'll make your wallet cry. So whether you like it or not, your credit score is the financial world's way of summing you up in a neat little package. Here's the thing to remember. Your credit score does not determine your worth as a person. It may feel like that sometimes because it has such a huge impact on your life, but you deserve a healthy financial future. So let me hit you with some good news. Your credit score isn't set in stone. It's not a tattoo, okay? It's more like a mood ring for your finances. Your credit score is a living, breathing number that's constantly being recalculated by the three major bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, based on the latest information from your credit report. So what is your credit report? Your credit report is essentially your financial report card, tracking and measuring every financial move you make your credit accounts, whether you're paying your bills on time or not, and other bits of financial information that I'll get to in a second. Here's why this is important. Imagine trying to buy a home, to finance a car, or to build a business without access to credit. A low credit score can make these dreams feel impossible. But on the flip side, a good credit score can open doors to better interest rates, higher credit limits, and more financial opportunities. That's why understanding and improving your credit score is a game changer for your financial future. By understanding what goes into your credit score, you can take steps to improve it. And that's where the real magic happens. When you start seeing your score climb, you're actually watching your financial opportunities expand. Here's what you need to know. Your credit score is influenced by five main factors. Payment history makes up 35% of your score. This is the heavyweight champion of credit factors. It's all about whether you pay your bills on time every time. Lenders want to see that you are reliable. For example, let's say you have a credit card and a car loan. If you've never missed a payment on either of these in the last seven years, you're in great shape. But if you were late on your car payment three months ago, that's going to ding your score. Even one late payment can stick around on your credit report for up to seven years. So set up those automatic payments, folks. Credit utilization makes up 30% of your score. This looks at how much of your available credit you are using. It's like a game of financial limbo. The lower, the better. Here's a scenario. You have a credit card with a $10,000 limit. If your balance is $3,000, your utilization is 30%. And that's okay, but it's not great. Ideally, you wanna keep it under 30%, and under 10% is even better. So if you can get that balance down to $1,000 or less, you're golden. And here's a pro tip. 
Even if you pay off your card in full each month, keep an eye on the balance reported to the credit bureaus. It's usually on your statement balance, not your current balance. Length of credit history makes up 15% of your score. In the credit world, older is better. The longer you've had credit accounts, the more data lenders will have to assess your credit worthiness. So let's say you're 30 years old and you've had a credit card since you were 18. That is 12 years of credit history. Nice. But if you just got your first credit card last year, your history is short, which could lower your score. This is why it's often a good idea to keep old accounts open even if you don't use them much. Just make sure that they don't have annual fees. Credit mix makes up 10% of your score. Lenders like to see that you can handle different types of credit responsibly. It's like showing off your financial juggling skills. Having a mix of revolving credit like credit cards and installment loans like a mortgage or a student loan, that can be good for your score. But don't go applying for loans that you don't need just to improve this factor. It's more about managing the mix that you naturally acquire over time. And finally, new credit makes up 10% of your score. Opening several new accounts in a short time can be seen as risky behavior. It's like suddenly buying a bunch of new outfits. Lenders might wonder if you're trying to impress them for a reason. Let's say you apply for three new credit cards in one month. Each application typically results in a hard inquiry on your credit report which can lower your score slightly. Plus, it reduces the average age of your accounts. So space out those applications and only apply for credit that you really need. Understanding these factors is key to improving your score. And if you want to dive deeper into this, I've got just the thing for you. My free Start Repairing Credit Challenge is a five-day program where you'll learn exactly how to tackle each of these factors and boost your credit score. And the best part is, it's completely free. So sign up right now at StartRepairingCredit.com. And here's my final point. Your credit score is a powerful tool in your financial arsenal. By understanding it and taking steps to improve it, you're setting yourself up for a brighter financial future. And remember, if you are passionate about this stuff like I am, you might even consider turning it into a business. My upcoming webinar will show you exactly how to do that, how to use your knowledge to help others and build a thriving credit repair business. And I'll end by saying, if you want to learn more about credit repair, check out Credit Reports 101. And if you'd like to improve your credit score and learn how to earn extra income repairing credit for others, check out my brand new Start Repairing Credit Challenge. So sign up right now at startrepairingcredit.com and keep changing lives.